my right ear is hot. Um, it's cooling down now that I put the video on because I guess they was like, bitch, listen, saying I, I always say bitch about everything. So listen, telling me to go ahead. You hear what I'm saying to you, go to say it. So listen, I had this dream and I brought it to my mother's attention. So a lot of the times, like honestly on my channel, I share a lot more dreams that I've had, like with my mom and not a lot of the dreams are on the channel but like the ones that I share with my mom a lot of those are not on the channel but the ones that I had that I share on the channel she don't know a lot of them she don't know right so this is one I didn't share with the channel but it's just not on purpose I was just guided to share it with my mom only at that time so now I'm got it to share with you guys and God is reminding me of the dream when my mother gave me a knife. All right. So this, all right. The dream was I was in this house washing dishes at the sink. My mother was standing next to me and there was a staircase behind me that goes downstairs to the front door. All of a sudden that door kicks open and I see my father walking up the stairs. My mother passes me a knife as I'm already turned around looking at the stairs and my hands are behind me because my hands was in the dishes, like, you know, with the soap and shit. And then like when I turned around, I kind of like had like my hands still on the sink, but turned around halfway. Right. And my mother passed me a knife in the hand that was on the sink. It was my father walking up the stairs. And outside of my house, there was a gang of people that he brung with him to kill me. So my mother had slid that knife in my hand. And in my mind, I can hear her saying to me, if he tries anything, just kill him. So he walks up the stairs and he tells me while he's walking up the stairs angrily that he's going to drag me out this house. And he's going to do this, this and that to me. And... It was all because of the things that I've exposed about him. And so when he got to the top of the stairs, instead of stabbing him, I kicked him and he fell down the stairs. Now, my mother looked at me like, why did you do what I said? But I'm not about to kill nobody. Like, I just, I'm I'm just not hurt. Like, I, I'm sorry. Like, I don't, like, not sorry, but for real. I don't want to kill nobody, especially if I've ever had love for you. Regardless of what you've done, I don't want to have to do it. So him walking up the stairs and not causing any harm to me made me decide to just kick him down the stairs instead of waiting for him to get to the top of the stairs and just stabbing him in a main artery. <clears throat> so... I go outside and I see this whole gang of people. And the funny thing about it is before I had that dream, I had a different dream where I was able to see outside of this house. I wasn't in the house yet where that part happened at. The part of the dream was, I guess, the step before that where they was outside. It was a bunch of men he had together. And they was, oh, you hear my cats over here fighting? I don't know. Stop it. Stop. So they was all outside talking. And all I know in this dream is I was watching them from like a higher perspective. Like I could see down on them. And my father was like in the front and they were all gathered in front of him, like in a circle like surrounding him, but only to where they could see from the side, like he could see from the peripheral and in front of him. That's how they was in front of this house that in the second dream I was in. But in that dream, I didn't know what fucking house this was. So I'm looking and I'm like, I'm listening to the things he's saying to them and the things that they're saying and they getting all riled up. And he basically, you know how, um, Soldiers get 
and, and even in basketball, football, whatever, they wound you up before you go out to go do whatever you're going to do. They make sure you know what the steps is going to be and everything and get you hyped, right? That's what he was doing. And, and that dream, when I saw that, I interrupted it and I said, you know I'm psychic, right? And all of the people turned to where my voice was coming from. I don't know. I felt like I was like an owl in a tree or something. I was some. I was in a tree. I said, you know I'm psychic, right? Or I could have been a raven. I could have been a crow. It doesn't fucking matter. I couldn't see my physical self. But that's what I said. And they had all looked towards my direction. And everybody scattered. And my father just was looking. And then he walked to the house. So then the second dream is him walking up the stairs. I'm in the house washing dishes. But my higher self is out here. Like, you know I'm, <laughs> I mean, you know I'm psychic, right? That's kind of how it is like given even with the current energy that I'm living in at this point. Like I could be doing my daily life task, but my higher self, she out here and she watching you, whoever you are, these people, and she's letting me know what's going on. And that's because that is what God told her to do. So it's kind of like, that's the reason why when I call a uncle of mine who is the pastor of the church that my family runs, they have plenty, and he is the one who runs them because it was passed down to him. And when I called him and I was like, where is uh, grandma's grave site? Like, I know where the location is, but I don't know, like, the lot number and all of that. This motherfucker, by the end of the conversation, well, basically, he didn't give me no information. He act like he didn't know, but he was the one who did the funeral services, the burial. He knows everything, but he did not want to tell me. But he didn't know that I knew all of that because we don't speak because I don't fuck with my father's side of the family since I was 12. So, and I have memories of him, too, when I was younger, where you, you trying to all right, this is how the family, you go take a, you go visit family members and then y'all take your pictures and this person, him, puts you on his lap and he put, he cuffs his hand up under your shit, like your private parts. Cuff his hand up under there during the picture. Why does your hand have to be on my shit? And I feel like it's all satanic and ritualistic shit. They bring the new babies around the family members who have been doing some fucked up ass shit for a long time. And these babies don't know what the fuck is going on. And everybody else that's in the room is acting like this is all normal. But you're feeling like this is not. I don't want your hand there. I don't. You feel me? It's. It's ritualistic. And they're hiding under the guise of a church. I have not exposed the name of this church yet, but it will happen when God tell me to. But at the end of the day, I reached out to this person and I asked him, you know, for her gravesite. And he ultimately told me that he doesn't know. But when I do get there to let him know how I like my gravesite that they've picked out for me. This is a part two to the last video where I am I found out that the whole witchcraft shit with my family, with this church, and that's on my father's side only. I'm not speaking on my mother's side. My mother's side also ties to Africa, but my father's side with the shit that was happening. This is what they do. They hide under the guise of Christians and Baptists people and people go to see them all the time they go to see this man his name is Clayton they go see him and they adopt uh, I'm like they adopt these names like it's for real like it uh, they they adopt these names and it's so crazy like how are you gonna tell somebody you've no 
contact with since they were like maybe five to seven, eight years old that they should be picking out their gravesite because you know that they've been exposing their father. The females in my family that know I exposed my father, they don't talk to me either. But the men in my family that know I exposed my father, oh, they turned up. They team him. But that's cool because, like I told my son's father, I don't care what church you go to, how many masks you go to, mosque, whatever, you know, because he's Muslim, whatever you do, it doesn't matter because... You know those people in the church and in those masks and, you know, in your religious congregations, you know those people way better than you know God. So it's nothing you could tell me about how I'm doing and what God got going on in my path when I actually have communication with him and you don't. When you know... God, better than you know, the next person that's with you in the physical, that's trying to portray to be something, that's when you know whatever they're trying to say to you is just a projection. They're trying to make you feel like they know more than you. They could teach you. They could guide you because of their sex as a masculine or because of their choice of religion, which is supposed to be superior to others. But at the end of the day, they're still ignorant and they're lying and they're lost and they're trying to guide you. And the lost cannot guide the ones who have been chosen to guide. So when you cut them off and you look at them and you see, you evaluate the whole situation, you realize they just wanted somebody to believe in them. They just wanted somebody to believe in what they believed in. So they didn't feel alone. But they are ultimately alone in that. And they are ultimately feeling alone in that. And they know that. But with you, they see you walking alone. But they could feel the presence of many. You are not alone. So... They're starting to see the difference in the truth has always been in front of their face. But they just wanted to be the ones to somehow have the real truth when really they had the real lie dressed up in a uniform that said truth. I keep telling y'all. Halloween season, go ahead, dress up, do what you want to do. That's cool. But the rest of the year, be yourself every year.